Hello internet, I'm Jackie Fox, and today, well, today I learned how to use Roll20.net for one, and for two, I translated and expanded the entirety of the game that I built yesterday in uh, whatever Google Slideshow program is within this and actually made it significantly cooler. Also, Rundle doesn't have their cannon. <laughs> I'm gonna have that. They don't they don't need their big fuck off cannon quite yet. Why why is there one on the Look. They don't need any of their cannons yet. Alright. So each faction is gonna have its own special ability that can be used by sacrificing any of your units turns. Each player is going to start with three units. That's going to be two heroes and an army. Each of those is going to have specialized attacks up to maybe four skills uh, per hero and up to three skills per army. We have passives, we have counters. Everybody doesn't have all of those, but there is a smattering of each. So that um, while everything is going to probably feel pretty similar to Wotiv in a lot of ways, it's also going to be a bit more RTS, but also um, uh, maybe like Magic the Gathering and a bit more varied playstyles because limited move pools are really going to um, focus on what certain teams do best. So let me introduce you to the teams you have on the field. There are nine factions, but I have four of them on the field at the moment and they are on screen. Let's start at the top with Hindler. So, uh, this is an interesting army. Uh, Blood Awakening. So, after depositing eight turns, heroes and armies uh, allied to you gain five defense and five damage. Um, if you have a lot of allies, that is a really strong bonus. So, a little bit later game, they make a really strong ally <clears throat> to have on your side. As for their units, Resnick is kind of a support and a ranged unit, whereas Oberon is more of a vanguard DPS that has the ability to, instead of taking a turn, generate a vision army, which will be an additional army that can kind of move independently of all of your other units and also can help build towards uh, the Blood Awakening because it can use its turns to help uh, hasten that awakening. <clears throat> the next is going to be Rundle. So for Rundle, we're going to have a close range uh, fire strike unit in Raldor that is just really beefy. And then we're going to have Jaden and the Rundle army playing uh, kind of a supportive damage role in that they are both ranged units so they're going to be firing across borders into neighboring countries and overall just supporting Raldor from afar. So Raldor is up front tanking and taking damage while the army and Jaden can fire across the border and support him. Jaden also has some control abilities himself, the ability to cancel ability activation, so basically like a counter spell if you're thinking about this in a magic kind of direction. Because your heroes get a certain amount of AP per turn, and much like mana, that is going to basically reset at the beginning of their turns. So you don't have to use all of it on your turn. You can actually hold some of that, uh, some of their AP for counter spells for counter type actions such as jamming thrust. Moving on to Horn, Horn is a very slow and defensive start. They're pretty strong, pretty beefy, and their national talent, uh, Keen Blades, doesn't take that long to activate. That's gonna give them additional AP per turn as well as additional, what is it, is it additional damage? Additional damage. They don't need extra defense. The, uh, the AP. So that's really going to accelerate them uh, quite a bit. This can get doubled down on through uh, Valade here, who can vitalize all of his allies, which makes him a really strong diplomatic partner 
Um, a lot of the supports in this game are units that you probably want to ally with. So, you know, it's pretty cool to ally with Resnick and eventually get uh, the benefit of the Blood Awakening, but also have the ability for her to heal you. Um, you also have Valade, who doesn't have any heals, but has really good Green Mage supportive capabilities that affect all of his allies and basically just scale up and get really, really powerful late game when you have a lot of uh, people on your side. Whereas Mashari is a lot more of a frontline support and healer. And then you have Leonis. So Leonis has a lot of Diplo and Control in that they're going to be playing for a slightly different win con that I think works a little bit better in larger games than in smaller games based on a mechanic called Saving Grace. So if you have a unit in a territory that has over 50 HP and another unit in that territory goes down that's controlled by another player, you can perform a saving grace, which will leave it with 25 HP at the cost of 50 of uh, the HP for your unit. But this will uh, gain their allegiance, whether they want to or not, and it can break their former allegiances. Basically, you save their life and therefore they owe you one. But the Leonis trick is to increase the amount of HP that they are restored to. So you're bringing them back from death to closer to like 100 HP. And this even doubles down further with Mont's ability. Now, Mont is very much a tank and kind of a control tank at that, whereas Stern is very much a DPS, but also has the ability to deal very exact amounts of damage, which I think is going to be really interesting if the right player has control of it. There are five additional factions, as well as a big old super boss in the Realm Scourge, um, which I hope to work into matches. We have Finnis. So Finnis can get to their national ability rather quickly. It just increases the amount of... They get um, like extra damage and, eight, and an HP heal whenever they KO another unit. The Finnis army especially is good at taking out other armies in particular and is quite beefy and powerful besides. Um, Odoa has the potential to take multiple turns by getting KOs, but also those KOs are often gaining her health back. She has one of the lowest healths of any of the heroes, but also maybe the most self-healing potential, especially once she gets her national shenanigans behind her. Um, she's also one of the characters that has four passives just because I had to add one to her that says that whenever she becomes allied to a character she is allied to them until death which I guess can be broken by a saving grace but that's it so very very aggro but also um, potentially like rather defensive when we're talking about Kilfe and a lot of regenerative capabilities when we're talking about old Doa and then we have uh, the Ariel. So Ariel is not on this map, as far as I can tell, unless it's somewhere that I'm not quite aware of. Um, it just is not represented on there. So I'm going to give you a Wanderer start. You can start anywhere in any section that you want to. There is one thing that you cannot do. Actually, there's two things you cannot do. Um, as this faction, you cannot activate the conquering bonus for either Leonis or the Crystal Sanctum. But in exchange for that, your national ability, since there's nowhere to camp to activate it, is active instantly and can be used at any time during your playthrough. It's probably one of the weaker ones overall, but it is usable at literally any time for no cost, and that's got to count for something. Oh yeah, also, Rundle's thing is they have a big ol' fuck-off cannon. I, I, yeah, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but <laughs> a big ol' fuck-off cannon over here that gets one cannon blast per turn. Um, Wazette. Wazette also has the ability to, as their national thing, summon an ice golem, which is probably one of the more powerful summonables in this respect. 
you have Rosa Luna, who is in who is the most ranged unit here, um, and also has a lot of techniques that power up armies that are allied to you. So if you ally with people like uh, maybe a really strong allegiance partner for her really early on might be Sadly or Oberon because either of them have the ability to bring in additional armies. She would also be really cool if Glacella could go out and get a ring from the Crystal Sanctum. Glacella has both, um, what is it, fire magic damage and water pierce damage so she is pretty versatile and also has pretty good damage while having a little bit of beefiness to her to keep her good as a vanguard unit and then you have range support in the way of the uh the wizette army so similarly to rundle you can have her charge out Although she does have a bit, uh, a little bit more range in her kit in some respects um, with her water pierce move than Raldor. Well, no, Raldor actually has a lot of range in his kit too. So this this actually plays really, really similarly to Rundle in that you have a, a very mobile or higher range uh, vanguard unit and your army can also be a part of the support really easily and you're building towards a big national weapon. Uh, well, that's almost all of. Oh no, hold on. We're we got two more. Um, Ovis is next. So McLeod is kind of a beefy frontline boy. He has the ability to kind of crank himself up uh, little by little throughout the fight. I believe. Um, to the point where he get, or, or no, he has the ability to kind of build himself up to be pretty tanky in a lot of respects, but also um, kind of increase his damage. He can also hit multiple targets pretty well and has good range. Whereas Rogza is very much about camping. He has a lot of water damage that he can deal. He's very much an AOE damage unit. But his kit, um, maybe more so than anyone but Aldoa, is based uh, very heavily around camping. And then you have the Ovis army, which likes to punch things, I think is how I remember it. And then their national uh, thing is building a waterworks that damages all un unallied units weak to water every turn so higher theoretical range than rundle's cannon but a kind of similar effect but also in a way like rundle can like force you to ally with him with a gun to your head whereas i mean it's kind of the same strategy here with the waterworks in that you know if if one of your opponents is weak to water um, you can really screw with them with this. The uh, the Rundle Cannon, by the way, is weak to water, so Ovis can counter Rundle in this respect. But really, this is a bit more of a defensive and area control faction that doesn't really have the same range capabilities as some of those other armies I was comparing it to a second ago. And then we have the Crystal Sanctum. So the Crystal Sanctum is, is interesting. Sadly, as you can see, does not have any damage capabilities. However, he can steal people's armies. Um, he can also uh, counter damage. So while he's not like attacking on his turn, he is saving his AP to be able to counter skill activations against him, which makes him similar to Rogza, a very good camper. Even though he doesn't necessarily have the BV stats of Rogza, he is a very reactive unit that can also heal himself every turn. So he's very hard to take off the board. Um, Whisper is tanky and she doesn't start out doing a lot of damage, but her damage actually scales up really quickly during um, during a match. So she gets quite powerful over time. And then 
you can also, as I alluded to before, before convert people's armies into your believers. And all of your believers have an attack that gets more and more and more powerful and actually quite strong um, based on how large the total size of your congregation is. So this nation especially wants to build up a lot of armies um, by stealing the Masadli if it can. And it's uh, kind of national thing is a reset button that brings dead heroes back to life and all sorts of other shenanigans, but it takes a very long time to unlock, which is okay because Sadly can camp really well, and by stealing other people's armies, he can bring them in to build his wonder and get his nation off the ground. So, all of that being said, now that you know what each of the nations do, the way the game works, is that we'll kind of roll for initiative get our turn order set up and then and then you can on your turns you can move two between each of these one movement is basically uh puts you into an adjacent territory you can't keep going further if there is a unit in that territory so, potentially, starting with Leonis, I could move Mont all the way into Ovis. But I wouldn't be able to move Stern or the army. Probably.